Hi, and welcome back to Vita Cooking at the Rhythm of My Heart. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, if you haven't done so already, remember to subscribe, like and share my videos, activate the bell on the bottom of the screen so you can be notified when I upload new videos. As always, I'd like to share a little bit of my childhood and some of the recipes that I grew up eating. And today I have prepared for you a step-by-step -step on how to make one of my favorites, bifte empanado or breaded cube steak. Um, I ate that the, for the first time when I was about 12, 13 years old, and it was prepared for us by my uncle Eddie, who worked in a restaurant called Aguada Seafood, uh, very famous, uh, particularly for this type of dish. So I decided that I needed to learn how to make it. So when I come back, I'm going to take you through this easy step-by-step -step on how to make bifte empanado. cube steaks requires very few ingredients but just a little bit of time and patience um, I went ahead and I asked my butcher to get my steaks uh, nice and ready of course if you want to and you have the time you can uh, make these at home and tenderize them using one of these gadgets uh, in my case today I was a little pressed for time so I went ahead and I asked the butcher to do that however if you choose to make your own steaks at home be sure to select a nice tender cut of meat uh, because these type of steaks are not gonna have a long time to cook and the number one quality as I remember eating it as a little girl when I was about 12 years old is that they came out nice and tender so be sure to select a tender cut of beef when you make these uh, you can also make a bifte empanado using pork and chicken um, if you like so in the near future I'll show you how to do that now for this recipe, I'm going to be using some eggs for the breading, some flour, and this is all-purpose flour, and some seasoned breadcrumbs, and these are Japanese seasoned breadcrumbs, but you can use whichever choice of breadcrumbs you like. Um, I'm also going to be using some garlic, and I have here some garlic paste. Uh, be sure to check my recipe and how to make the garlic paste, some freshly ground black pepper, and I'm also going to be using my own blend of adobo or you can use, you know, the leading brand of adobo. In my case, I'm going to be using uh, my blend. Um, I have some store-bought uh, sour orange and some store-bought mojo. If you have the time, you can make your own mojo. That's fine too. Now, when I come back, we're going to go ahead and season this and get it all ready. The first thing that you have to do is you want to season your steaks. Um, nicely and generously and I'm going to be using some of my homemade adobo again you can use the adobo of your preference but I am trying to create my own seasonings and spices part of the reason for that is because I, I like to control the amount of uh, salt that I consume also preservatives so you know whenever possible I like to create my own seasonings now I'm going to generously um, coat my steaks on both sides with the adobo and you know we want to make sure we get it nicely sprinkled and seasoned on both sides now I said earlier that the the recipe is very simple to make but it requires a little bit of time and patience the reason for that is because I like to marinate or season and marinate my steaks um, at least a few hours or even overnight before I make them. Now, part of the reason for that is because I'm looking for my steaks to be nice and tender when I cook them. Now, we're not going to be slow cooking these steaks, and that's important uh, to marinate them ahead of time. That way, you know, the end result is a better, tastier steak as well as tender. So, it really is optional and up to you how long you marinate these steaks. 
before you bread them and before you cook them. Now the next thing I'm gonna do, after I season my steaks with the adobo, is I wanna add a little bit of black pepper to mine. Now when I make my seasonings, I don't add peppers to them or black pepper to them. I like to control the amount of black pepper that goes into all my recipes, especially if I'm cooking for other people other than my family. You know, just as a courtesy, because maybe not everybody enjoys, you know, the taste of black pepper. Some people can't tolerate the spice. So we want to go ahead and generously, or to taste, add our black pepper to our steaks. Now, once we've done that, I'm going to go ahead and add or season with a garlic paste. Now, garlic is one of the uh, flavors that it's a must when you make bite. So for my bite empanado, I want to use a lot of garlic as well. Sorry about that. Looks like my camera was a little bit of focus. Now once I do this, we're going to go ahead and place our steaks in the pan. And I'm going to leave mine for a few hours before I bread them. And I want to do that in a pan, in the same pan where I'm going to you know, marinate them. So I'm gonna go ahead and add all my garlic. Remember, as always, I leave you a full recipe on the description box, and I'm using my hands, but if you don't want the smell of garlic on your hands, you can always use kitchen uh, gloves or food prep gloves. And we wanna make sure we coat our steaks nicely with the garlic on both sides. And now, once we've done that, I'm going to go ahead and pour the uh, sour orange. The sour orange is going to help tenderize our steaks. And it's going to make them nice and moist as well. And I really enjoy the combination of the uh, mojo along with the sour orange. Now, if you don't have sour orange, you can use a combination of orange juice as well as lime or lemon juice together. Now once we do that, I'm going to go ahead and rub my steaks nicely with the marinade. I'm going to cover them with some plastic wrap, place them in the refrigerator, and ideally it'd be best to marinate them for at least uh, an hour or two before you decide to uh, bread them uh, or up to overnight. The longer you marinate it, the more tender your steaks are going to be. I'm going to go ahead and wash my hands. And uh, when I come back after a few hours of marinating the steaks, we're going to bread them. And I really just cannot wait to try them. You want to marinate your steaks a minimum of at least two hours. Of course, the longer you marinate your steaks, the juicier and tender they become. I left mine in the refrigerator overnight, uh, which to me, um, I find that when I fry these steaks, uh, it just gives you a nice, juicy, tender steak, which is what I'm looking for. Now, we're going to be preparing our breading station, and that is going to be, of course, some flour, breadcrumbs, and eggs. Start by prepping our eggs, and we want to just whisk our eggs, just like so. Now if you like, you can season your eggs. I like adding flavor throughout the whole cooking process. And in this case, I'm going to be adding some of my homemade adobo to the eggs. I'm going to go ahead and add that. And this is just... Uh, a matter of layering flavors all the way throughout so that the end result is nice and tasty. You, know, you don't want bland tasting eggs. Once you have your eggs ready, same thing, we want to season our flour. I'm going to also add some of my homemade adobo. I'm going to add it to the flour. And this time I'm also going to add some freshly ground black pepper. Again, this is just going to enhance the flavor uh, on the flour, and that's about a quarter, quarter teaspoon of each. Okay, that's very quick and very easy. And of course, the uh, breadcrumbs are already seasoned, so we don't have to add anything else to that. So, the most important thing for this setup, and I hope you can see it, is um, having your breading station set up in a way that 
you know, you can go ahead and um, bread your vite. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the first one. Start by taking your vite, and I didn't rinse my vite, so cube steaks, I left them with the marinade. That's only going to bring more flavor to our steaks. Now we want to drench them in the flour. Try to keep one of your hands dry so that you can, you know, you don't get uh, breaded hands on fingers and you can manage them without making them a mess. But then again, you know, the mess you can always clean. This is just fun to make. We're going to shake off the excess flour, drop them on the egg wash, and we're going to make sure it's nicely coated on the egg wash. Now you can do this twice if you like, um, but remember the start of the show is the cube steak, so you don't want to overbread it. You want to be able to taste your steak. Next, we shake off any excess egg. We just make sure it's nicely coated. And we want to coat it with our breadcrumbs nicely, just like that. I want to make sure you get it on both sides. I know I should have gotten bigger uh, breading containers, but honestly, I love these containers. Uh, I like to use them because, you know, I can just take my time. Okay, these are pretty big steaks and they do feed one to two people, either one very hungry person or two people. And there you have it. Shake off the exit breadcrumbs, just like that. And our steak is ready for the fire. I'm gonna place it on the cookie tray. Preheat your oil to between 350 and 375 degrees. And if you wanna double check to be sure your pan is nice and heated, you can drop a little bit of the breadcrumbs into the oil. And if it rises to the top, you know, you know your oil is nice and ready. You take your red cube steak gently, drop it into the hot oil, just like that. And I have about a half an inch of oil in the pan. And since these steaks are fairly big, you know, we want to do them one at a time. You don't want to overcrowd your pan when you're doing this. Now, I have my heat at 350, between 350 and 375, but you want to keep an eye on it. You don't want to burn your steaks. What you're looking for is a nice golden brown crust. You don't want to overcook it. So, in a few more minutes, we're going to go ahead and check it. This usually takes about three to five minutes on each time. And you want to keep an eye on it because you don't want to overcook your steak. Okay, let's go ahead and check it. In about four minutes, look at a nice golden brown color. That's what I'm looking for. We're gonna cook it on the other side for about three to four minutes. The steak is done, and when I come back, I'm gonna show you how I like to serve this breaded cube steak. Now you guys know that I like to give my recipes my own twist and for my cube steak or my breaded cube steak I made a cream sauce. So this is a pink and black peppercorn cream sauce and what I did is I took some cognac, some beef broth and I brought it to a boil. Once it came to a boil and it reduced by two thirds I added the heavy cream and the uh, peppercorns to it Continue cooking and simmering until it reduced and began to thicken just like so and I added a pinch of salt and I'll be sure to leave the uh, full recipe uh, for this cream sauce on the description box for you as well um, And if you want to see me making this uh, sauce for you um, Leave me a comment. I'll be more than happy to show you how I made the sauce uh, But for tonight what I really wanted to showcase is how we make our cube steak or breaded cube steak and steak always needs a nice sa sauce, so I decided to go with a peppercorn cream sauce. Cube steak.
steaks are pretty awesome on their own, but there's always room for, for improvement. So I took some extra virgin olive oil and I've preheated. And now I'm going to drop some Spanish yellow onions to saute. You know, and we're going to go ahead and saute our onions. I'm going to add some Cuban oil peppers. Onions and peppers are always a nice addition to any kind of steak. So we're going to use our peppers and our onions to create a nice little bed for our cheap steaks. Soak them until they're nice and translucent. And if you like, you can add some red cabbage to that. Again, this is just adding layers of flavor, and you all know by now that that is my style. I like to add layers of flavor to my meals. And I'm going to continue sauteing my vegetables, and in just a little bit, I'm going to be ready for plating. I'm adding some salt. I like to use sea salt and some freshly ground black pepper. The taste. You can add just about anything you like to this, but remember, we want to showcase our cube steak. This is just to create a nice little bed for our steaks. So, okay. Put the onions until they're nice and tender and translucent. And oh my goodness, we're ready to eat. Finally, there you have it, my version of breaded cube steak or biste empanado, evita style. And I'm serving mine with some sauteed onions, peppers, and cabbage, some tostones de pana or breadfruit, salad, and a homemade dressing. Check it out, it looks delicious. Now, the tostones de pana or the panas or breadfruits are a little bit difficult to find in my area, so I'm going to be using the frozen kind. And they come in a package like this. They come frozen, so you just follow the directions for thawing. And you can make these in your air fryer or just fry them in a skillet. And those are going to make a great side dish for my breaded cubed steak. I'm serving my breaded cube steak with some tostones and these are breadfruit tostones and salad but you can really uh, serve it with just about anything potato salad, mashed potatoes, some rice and beans it really is up to you um, I'm gonna go ahead, I went ahead and I cut the edge but I want to cut a different piece so I can show you just how tender it is and if you notice it's very easy to cut through it and check it out it's a nice thin piece of meat and of course it's still moist and juicy not too much breading check it out it is absolutely amazing now I'm gonna go ahead and get some onions and some peppers see if I can get a nice little bite here we go mm. it's juicy it's tender it pays off to marinate the steak overnight because it makes it a lot easier to cut through it. Again, it's very important that you select a nice tender piece of beef when you make these kind of dishes. Mmm. <laughs> it is so good. Oh my goodness. Well, guys, as always, I'm Evita, cooking at the rhythm of my heart. Buen provecho. Y hasta la próxima.